Now, WordPress is a solid platform for building websites on. And even when you combine it with a tool like Bricks Builder, there are still things that you probably want to do or need to do that you can't easily do or do at all using a tool like Bricks. This is where a tool like Flowmatic, an automation and plugin for WordPress, opens up so many possibilities. Now, version 5 of Flowmatic was released very recently and it's brought with it a couple of nice changes. One of the key ones is a visual way in which we can build out our workflows. Today, I want to demonstrate how we can use Flowmatic alongside Bricks Builder, take some simple concepts, but make some really powerful decision-based workflows that can do so much. So let me kick things off by showing you what I've got set up, and then we're going to take a look at how we can start working with Flowmatic to build out all these different decision-based automations. I've got a simple form created, and I'm going to use this as an example of, let's just say you want a support request, where you want to put in the name, email, and so on, but you may also want to put in something like your urgency level, and then have different things happen based upon whether it's an urgent issue or whether it's something that doesn't really matter too much. So I've got a simple basic form set up inside Bricks with name, email. We've got a simple select that's got two options, mission critical and not urgent. And then finally the message and you can send it. Now let's quickly just check out what we've got here for the action. All that happens is this will redirect after one second to a different page. Could be a thank you message, could be even to the support page. It's up to you where you want to go. That's not important at this point. So what happens now is no email, nothing is generated from this. It simply does a trigger action action for Flowmatic. So once that's set up, we've got one more thing I want to show you, then we can take a look at Flowmatic. I've created a custom post type called Support Requests, and inside there, if we take a quick look, you'll find that I've got basically all of the options disabled except for custom fields. If we go into the field groups, I've created a custom field group that has basically exactly the same as what we have inside the form in Bricks. So the name, email, the urgency, and the message, and that's then been associated with the support request post type. That's it, nothing complex. Now I'm simply using advanced custom fields free, but if you wanted to use Pro, there are some additional functions that are supported inside Flowmatic, but I'm not gonna worry about those today. Okay, so that's the setup. Let's now go into Flowmatic. We we'll take a look at the integrations, and what I have installed is advanced custom fields and the Bricks forms. We also have all the normal sort of native functions then that are part of Flowmatic and WordPress and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our workflows and we're going to create a new workflow. We'll name this. Let's call it support requests. And you'll see we get our webhook by Flowmatic, which is our first step, which is our trigger, which is not what we want. So what you do is click on it, and then you see the app. We'll click on change, and we'll choose Bricks form. And there we go, we've now changed that. Then we've got the trigger event. We've got two options here currently, which is a new form submission. But if you are a pro forms user of Bricks Forge, you could use that here as well. So if you don't use the native forms feature inside Bricks, you want to use Bricks Forge, you can still connect it up and do all these different things here. We're going to use the native function now, and we'll say new form submission. And if you want to, you can just change the name of this. So we'll rename it from new form submission, and we'll just say support request submission, and click on rename. Makes a bit more sense now. We can position this where we want, and now what we're going to do is we're going to click on continue. No configuration required for this. We'll click on continue one more time. It says, right, what we need to do now is test everything and then capture the response. What does this mean? Well, it's simple. All we've got to do is click on capture response. That's now waiting for the response from that form to be submitted. So we just need to basically go and submit that form. It doesn't need to do anything, just submit it so it can capture the data that passes over via the form and all the other bits and pieces that go with it. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our form and we'll view this on the front end. There's our form, let's just fill it out and then we'll click on send. That will then say successful, and it'll redirect us like we'd set up. So now jumping back into Flowmatic, you can see there's our response one. We can expand this out, and it'll show us all of the information, including the form fields that is captured from the Bricks form. So there's my name, email, the urgency, and also the message we've supplied, and any other information that may be relevant. So once we're happy, we'll click on Save and Close, and that's the first part done. That's the trigger set up. So when that form is submitted, something will happen. What do we want to happen? This is where the fun starts. Let's click on Plus. We can add a step in. So you want to use the WordPress install integration. So we'll click on that, and now we can go through and set up what we want to happen here. So WordPress is the app we want to use. The action in this example is to say new post. We'll click on continue. 
And now we can go through and set up and pull in the data that we need. We can also reference data from ACF. We can reference data from the form that's been submitted. There's lots of different things we can do here. So the first thing we need to do, we've got these two required fields, the post title and the post type. Now we've disabled the post titles. So we're going to create something of our own. So we're going to click on plus, and you can see inside there we can access Flowmatic variables. So these are specific variables that are generated as part of Flowmatic, and also the support request submissions, which are basically being pulled from that form that we've just seen. So let's cancel that for a second. We're going to say support request. And what we can do is we can tag additional information on to the end. So let's open this up. We'll say for this example, we want to use the name of the person. So we'll say, there we go. And if you wanted to, you can also then tag on another one at the end of it and say plus, and we say a flowmatic variable, and we can say the date, the date time, the time, whatever you kind of want. There's lots of various different sort of styling options here. Up to you here on a work. So what we'll do is we'll just choose something really simple like this, for example. And that's it, job done. The post type is going to be our custom post type, which is our support request. And we can leave all the rest of those completely blank because they're not relevant in this example. We're not creating a standard post. Then we have the post status. So for this, we're going to say published because this is only going to be available kind of on the back end that logged in users and so on. You know, you get the idea. Then we've got our custom fields. So these are the four custom fields we created inside ACF. So if we quickly jump back to our ACF meta fields, you can see there's our name, email, urgency, and message. You can easily type these in yourself, or you can just click on any of these and just jump back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back. Our first key is going to be the name. Our value, we can click on the plus, and we can reference the dynamic information pulled from our form. So there's our submit form. We can open this up. First thing we want is the name. We'll select it. Add another one in. This is email, so for speed, I'm just going to simply type them in. Same again, choose the email, add more, our urgency, click on plus, and our final one, which is our message. So we'll sub grab that from there. Okay, so we've now referenced all of the data that we need. So if you quickly take a look, we've got our custom title at the top, what post type it references, the post status, and then we've got a bunch of custom fields that are pulling in data and storing those where we need them. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Continue. Then you've got some options for conditions. Now, you can, if you want to, set up some things here. So execute this step only if a condition are met. We're not going to worry about that. We're not going to worry about ignoring errors, and we're not going to worry about skip execution. We're going to leave it as it is. But again, like I say, there's lots of options here should you need them. Click on Continue, and then what we can do is we can test this based upon that form submission and the data that Flowmatic captured at the beginning. So we can say Test Action. That's now gone through. It shows us what data. It shows us in a JSON format and a simple format, and you can see the status is successful. So we know it's tested it with the data that we captured in our form submission at the beginning, and it's all working correctly. So we'll save and close. And let's just, for this, we'll say save our workflow, and we'll also come over and we'll publish our workflow so it'll work. So now, just to test and check everything is working the way it should do, if we take a look at our support request, custom post type, support request, Paul C, the date and time. If we expand this, you can see there's my name, email address, the urgency, and the message. So we've mapped it and it's pulled it into those relevant ACF fields. Pretty cool, but nothing too complex just yet. So let's add some extra features in here. Let's just say we wanted to do different things, maybe send an email to one person if it's a mission critical error, and maybe to a different person if it's not so urgent. So let's go back into Flowmatic. Let's quickly rename this from New Post. We'll call it New Submission and click Rename. Okay, so we have now have those two things set up. Let's click on the plus again. And we're going to leave these installed integrations alone. Let's take a look at some of the Flowmatic built-in tools. Let's take a look at one of the ones that I think is pretty nifty, which is the router or router. We'll choose that, and this allows us then to choose different routes based upon different parameters. So route A and route B. Let's just say this is a mission-critical urgency level. We want something to happen that's different to route B. So. Choose our field. Well, the field we've got to choose is based upon the form submission. So again, expand that out. We're going to choose the one that has the mission critical in this example, which is just our captured data. You can see it says contains. So if you want to be a little bit looser with additional information, but because this is a select field, there's only two different things that are come through in it. So we're going to say exactly matches, and then we say what does it match? 
and we're going to pop in Mission Critical. You can, if you want to, add additional filters so you can get very, very granular on how this works. You can set up AND conditions or ALL conditions and build this out to be as complex and comprehensive as you need. For example, that's enough. We click on Continue. You can see that pulls back some information. We can see, yep, everything's looking good. We'll say Save and Close. Now let's go to the next one. Click on that. Choose our field. So we're going to do the same thing again. Choose the same field. This time we're going to change this to exactly matches and put in the value. Click on Continue and Save and Close. So now we've set up both of those routes. What do we want to happen? So what will happen now is once someone submits a form request, it'll add it to the ACF custom post type. It'll then check for which route is applicable. So in other words, is it a urgent matter or is it not urgent? If it's urgent, what do we want it to do? Well, for this example, let's just say we want to send an email. So we'll click, we'll choose the email option. So you see this now opens up more options. We can choose the action event. So we'll just say send email, click on continue. Choose the email provider. I would generally recommend you set up a custom SMTP for things like this because you want to make sure that your emails are sent, especially when it's something that could be mission critical like this. But for this example, I'm going to use it as the default. I don't have any email server set up on you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll just choose the default. And now we can fill out the relevant information. So we'll drop in the email body. I would like to see the ability to add in the code that we have that's being used as part of the overall form. So we can say who it's from and those kinds of things, the email address and those kinds of pieces of information. That would be super useful. But you can also add attachments if you want to here. We'll click on Continue. If you want to apply conditions, you can do. We're going to leave those as they are and click on Continue. Again, that pulls in the relevant info so we can see what data and we click on Save and Close. And now we can kind of repeat that process for additional things here. So you could have a follow-up. You could have a lot of different options. And you can set a different one up here for route B. You kind of get the idea of what you could do with this. So what exactly have we done here? Well, we've taken a simple form inside Bricks. Once that's submitted, it will then add the relevant information into our custom post type. It'll take a look at the urgency level and depending upon the answer we've given it, it will do a different thing. Like I say, this is a very simple example, and you really could go so much further with what we created here with multiple different conditions and those kinds of things. But hopefully what you can see is how you could take some simple component pieces and build some really sort of comprehensive conditional logic to do a lot of different things. Now, over the coming weeks and months, I want to create a lot more content like this where I'll take some real world examples and scenarios and we'll build them out. This is a kind of precursor to that to show you some of the things you can do. But I'm going to look at a range of different scenarios and we maybe take something like this and we'll build a full support setup using Bricks alongside ACF and Flowmatic to be able to create quite a comprehensive setup. If you'd like to be notified about that, make sure you do hit that subscribe button down below to be notified when new content is added. If you want to learn about, more about working with Bricks Builder, check out these videos. And as always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.